I should theoretically be able to just twist this off and twist the new one on. <laughs> Keyword there is theoretically. Over the last few days, we've started to notice that our water pressure in our house is ridiculously high. You turn on any faucet in the house and suddenly there's this gush of water initially, and then it eases off a little bit. Now in my house, there's two reasons why this could be. It could be the pressure reducing valve, which reduces the pressure from the city as it enters the house, or it could be the thermal expansion tank on the water heater. In order to figure out which one of these was the problem, I first had to hook up a water pressure gauge to the hot water heater. You can also hook it up to your washer outlet or to an outside spigot, but if you have more than one spigot on the outside of your house like I do, sometimes the spigots might have different pressures, and that's because one may be veering off of the main line before it gets to your pressure reducing valve, in which case one will have the full pressure from the city, whereas the other one will actually reflect the pressure inside your house. In short, if you're gonna use an outside faucet to monitor your water pressure, make sure it comes in line after your pressure reducing valve and not before. Otherwise, you're just gonna be monitoring the city pressure, not your household pressure. Once you've got the gauge in place and you turn the water back on, the black line will reflect the water pressure at that current moment, whereas the red line will reflect the highest level of pressure that the gauge has read since it's been attached. If the black line on that gauge consistently stays below 80 PSI, but the red line goes really high, then the problem is likely your thermal expansion tank. If the black line is consistently at 80 or above, then it's probably your pressure reducing valve. That black line on my gauge is consistently reading over 80 PSI, and the thermal expansion tank was just recently replaced about maybe two months ago when we had the water heater replaced. So I'm pretty sure my problem is the PRV. All right, so I've got a new pressure reducing valve right here. I've got the exact same model that I had before, uh, so it should fit just perfectly. I should theoretically be able to just twist this off and twist the new one on. <laughs> Keyword there is theoretically. But before I do that, I've got to first shut off the water as tight as I possibly can and let the water out of the faucets upstairs. All right, so the water is all out, and I gotta admit, I am a little terrified about this, <laughs> but here we go. This twists off this way, so this one should twist off this way. Ah, here we go. Oh. All right, okay. A little bit of water still in there. I can just hang this right there. Ah, there we go. this wire right here that seems to not, it, it ends right here and it ends right there. I'm not sure what that wire is for. <laughs> Makes me think of a toddler swishing his pee around in the toilet. <laughs> Spray a little WD-40 on here. All right, well, I will take that off. This is just silicone lubricant. Whoop! Uh oh, Need some on my camera. Damn, that sucker is stuck. You gotta be kidding me with this thing. Oh, seriously, did I finally do it? Finally. Woo! Oh, I tell you, that was not easy. <laughs> All right, so find the biggest either channel locks or adjustable wrench that you can to do this. Because it's going to take some leverage for sure. Oh. Woo! That thing was still, even though I had tightened it as much as I could by hand, it was still dripping. Now I'm gonna take some Teflon tape and I'm gonna put it around the threads in the direction that I will also be turning it so that they don't come loose as I turn it. Now I'm gonna take off the new fittings 
and I'm just gonna reuse the old fittings that are already on here. I'm just gonna make sure that I also keep this rubber ring from the new one in there and intact. Now you'll notice that I've got this thing pointing down instead of up and uh, apparently it doesn't actually matter which direction it is in and if anybody knows differently than that then please comment below because I don't want to leave anything wrong in my house but um, apparently that doesn't actually matter and the reason I did that is because that is as tight as I can get this sucker so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one up as much as I can <laughs> now for the big reveal Tighten that up so tight with my channel locks before I can get it loose again. Oop. Yeah. Oh, looks like it's holding. Everything's filling up right now. That's why it's so loud. Score one for Chick Fix. Yay! <laughs> I can't even tell you guys how nervous I was to do this one. I was so worried about like breaking a pipe somewhere in here. Oh. Nice. For my fellow nerds out there who might be wondering what that copper wire was all about, I contacted my friend Matt, who is a professional plumber, and he told me that probably something in my house is grounded through the copper pipes. And because electrical current won't go through brass fittings, this is to compensate for that, to bypass it so that everything remains properly grounded. Now that I've got this new one in, the pressure is now exactly where it needs to be, which is fantastic. But if it wasn't, there is actually a way to adjust this either, you know, to increase your pressure or to decrease your pressure by loosening this nut and tightening this little screw either up or loosening it a little bit, depending on what you need, and then tightening this bolt back up again. Luckily for me, I don't actually have to do that, so I am good to go. I really want to see inside of it because I'm a nerd like that. I condensed it down to about a minute, minute and a half, but it actually took me well over an hour to finally get that thing loose. It was on there tight. Before I started this, I watched several YouTube videos on how to do it, just, uh, you know, like anybody else would. I swear every single one of them said, and then you just twist it off. <laughs> what they should have said was, spend the next couple weeks going to the gym, lift some weights, so you have enough upper body strength to actually turn this thing. Okay. Ooh, look in there. There is nothing in there. Ugh. Ugh. I just want to see the inside. Come on, man. Yeah, good boy. I think I'm gonna have to give up on this river. 